Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNO Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Health Sciences, SOHS, Post Basic Bachelor of Science in Nursing B.Sc.N.P.B., Revised, Third Year, BNS, to 11 Nursing Education and Research, Block 1 Introduction to Nursing Education, Unit 1 Education, Concept, Aims and Philosophy, 1.0 Objectives, After studying this unit, you should be able to define education, explain the meaning of education, differentiate between education as a bipolar and tripolar process, list the three forms of education, name the agencies of education, mention the factors determining the aims of education, describe the aims of education in general, identify the aims of education in independent. India, explain the aims of nursing education, define philosophy, explain the relationship between philosophy and education, describe important philosophies of education, explain the contributions of these philosophies to education, and 1.1 Introduction, you come across the term education very frequently in your day-to-day -day dealings. But have you given a thought as to what education means? Education is derived from two Latin words via z, e and duco, e means, out of and duco means I led. Education thus means leading out or drawing out. In other words, education helps to develop the inherent capacities. Already in an individual, and as Swami Vivekananda has said, education is the manifestation of perfection already in man. In this unit, you are going to learn the definition, meaning, forms and the process of education. You will also be learning the aims of education, in general, aims of education in independent India, the aims of nursing, education and philosophy of nursing education, one point to definitions and meaning of education, as you know, man gets cultured and civilized through education. The word education has a very wide meaning and it is very difficult to give a precise definition. Different people meant different things at different times when they tried to define education. Some of the definitions are stated here. Swami Vivekananda, as stated above, has defined education as manifestation of perfection already in man. Aristotle defined education as creation of a sound mind in a sound body. Pestalozzi said education is a natural, harmonious and progressive development of man's mind and powers. According to Mahatma Gandhi, education is an all-round drawing out of the best in child and man body, mind and spirit. John Dewey, an eminent American educationist, saw education as the power by which man is able to control his environment and fulfill his possibilities, Frobel said that education is a process by which the child develops its inner potentials in a manner so as to participate meaningfully in the external environment. He has said that the purpose of education is to expand the life of the individual in order to participate in this ill-pervading spirit which manifests and realizes itself in and through the whole universe. Redden and Ryan have given a very comprehensive definition. Education is the deliberate and systematic influence exerted by the mature person upon the immature through instruction, discipline and harmonious development of all the powers of human being, physical, social, intellectual aesthetic and spiritual. According to power of individual and social need, human beings are directed toward the union of the education with head creator at the final end. From the above definitions, we can see that the education meant different things for different people, yet all definitions explain the existence of innate or natural or inborn capabilities in a child which can be developed through Education to interact meaningfully with the environment. Activity 1. Read various definitions of education and develop the definition of nursing.
education in your own words after critically analyzing the definitions given in the text meaning of education we have already seen that education has different meanings now let us look into the etymological meaning of education i the meaning with regard to the origin of the word the word education has originated from the latin word educatum the meaning of which is to lead out or to bring ideas out of the mind hence education is a process or an activity which leads ideas or emotions out of the mind synonyms of education are pedagogy shiksha vidya now let us see the wider meaning of education the wider or broad meaning of education is that it is a lifelong process of modification of behavior through every experience of life in this sense education is imparted by every person to anybody at any time at any place and any way it aims at the total development of the person in the strict narrow sense education means the training that is given within the four walls of an educational institution during a particular period of time to attain prescribed purposes and objectives 1.3 forms of education though there are no clear cut forms of education we can discuss about three types as follows formal informal and non formal let us see each in detail a formal education it is pre planned direct organized and given in specific educational institutions such as schools and colleges it is limited to a specific period and it has well defined curriculum it is given by qualified and trained teachers formal education observes strict discipline formal education can be primary middle secondary higher secondary levels in the school and undergraduate graduate and post graduate level in the colleges and universities which can be in art science technical and professional areas b informal education informal education is not pre planned or deliberate it has the following characteristics it is not pre planned it is indirect incidental and spontaneous no specific agencies or institutions are there like schools to impart this type of education no formal ends or goals or objectives are there takes place from the day to day activities experiences and living in the family or community or even in the school and colleges incidentally either through informal interaction or by observation of various things no prescribed time table or curriculum is there no qualified or trained teachers are there no examination or awarding of certificates take place is provided by informal agencies such as home or family or community c non formal education it falls within the formal and informal types of education it is a flexible system the characteristics are it is intentional incidental and given outside the formal system i e school it is consciously and deliberately planned organized and systematically implemented it is an open system of education without rigid rules regulations and fixed stages or time schedule it is a lifelong process integrated with life and work it is life oriented and environment based it is intended for all ages it is programmed to serve the needs of identified groups of different categories if and when they need it necessitates flexibility in designing the curriculum and the scheme of evaluation social or adult education distance education are the examples of non formal education all these three types of education formal informal and non formal have their due place in the modern system of education each has its own merits and demerits there is need to integrate the three forms and make education holistic and comprehensive 1.4 educational process modern educators consider education as a process some view it as a bipolar process and others as a tripolar process 
Bipolar process means that education is the result of interaction between two persons, i.e. educator and the educant, teacher and student. Education is a conscious and deliberate process in which one personality acts upon another, i.e. teacher's personality acts upon the personality of the student. Education becomes a shared activity. Tripolar process involves the interaction between the pupil, the teacher, and the social environment, i.e., it is not only the interaction between the teacher and the student but also with other students or anyone else in the environment. It is a three-dimensional process. According to the modern concept, education is more of a tripolar process than a bipolar process. 1.5 Agencies of Education Agencies of education are those factors which exercise an educational influence on the child. Specialized institutions of education are also known as agencies of education. Educational agencies can be classified as formal and informal, active and passive and other types of agencies. Formal agencies of education are those which have a predetermined location time, aim, plan and other programs. They are set up by the society. They have their specific, predetermined objectives, rules and regulations, examples, schools, religious institutions, library, museum, recreational, centers, etc. Informal agencies have no formal organization or predetermined objectives or activities, no formal rules or regulations. They perform educational functions incidentally, indirectly and unconsciously examples, home, family, playgroups, gangs etc. Active agencies are those agencies that work through human interactions. For them, education is a two-way process. These agencies are family, school, religious organizations, society, state, youth groups etc. Passive agencies see education as a one-way process. Examples of such agencies are cinema, radio, television, newspapers, magazines, etc. By and large these agencies do not work through interactions. Informations flow in one direction from sender to the recipient. But the various methods are adapted to have interactions by having question-answer session, panel, discussion, seeking feedback, giving replies, etc. A third classification is by F.J. Brown. Brown classifies educational agencies as formal, group, commercial and non-commercial agencies. Formal institutions are set up by the society. They are schools, churches, museums, art galleries, etc. Group organizations are family, play groups, communities, etc. Commercial agencies are mostly profit making agencies. Examples are press, cinema, radio, television, theater, etc. Non commercial agencies are mostly social service institutions. Examples are youth clubs, social welfare centers, sports clubs, scouts, adult education centers, etc. In conclusion, we can say that education is the joint responsibility of a number of agencies. The educational role is complementary as well as supplementary. Every agency has its own unique contribution to make towards education of the child. Family and school play very important role for the development of the child in the early years, we hope by now you have grasped the meaning, forms and agencies of education. Let us now see what are the aims of education. Activity 2. Identify the various agencies of education in your locality and classify them. According to Brown, 1.6 aims of education. An aim is a predetermined goal which inspires the individual to attain it. Through appropriate activities, educational aims are necessary in giving direction to educational activity. Educational aims are determined by certain factors. These are as follow, 
1.61 factors determining educational aims the factors that contribute for the determination of educational aims are philosophy of life views about human nature religious factors political ideologies socio economic problems cultural factors and exploration of knowledge these are presented in fig 1.3 a brief description of these is given as under i philosophy philosophy of life and educational aims are closely related in fact philosophy determines the aims of education education is the best means for propagation of philosophy philosophy and education are the two sides of a coin three elements of human nature these elements are always considered for the determination of educational aims for example idealists regard unfolding of the divine in man as the aim of education to religious factors religious factors exert their influence on educational aims in ancient india buddhism emphasized the inculcation of the ideals of that religion such as ahimsa and truth into the prevailing educational system three political ideologies political ideologies certainly have a say in the determination of educational aims the educational aims of a democratic political system can be quite different from that of an autocratic political setup for socio economic factors and problems these factors and problems of a country definitely have a say in deciding the educational aims of that country we cultural factors and problems socio cultural heritage of a country have a great influence on the aims of education education has to preserve and transmit the cultural heritage and traditions from one generation to another six exploration of knowledge education today is science oriented and technology based it has to aim at exploring new information education must represent these factors and be related to the realities and problems and issues of life aim of education is also related to time and space therefore they can change from time to time and place to place all the same there can be some common elements in the educational aims of different places factors determining educational aims exploration of knowledge cultural factors socio economic factors and problems political ideologies philosophy of life elements of human nature religious factors 1.6 point to aims of education and their relevance to indian context the following are the aims of education in general i vocational education should prepare the child to earn his livelihood and make him self sufficient and efficient economically and socially vocational efficiency must be an important aim of education two knowledge knowledge is as essential for intellectual growth as food is essential for physical growth knowledge is a must for good interpersonal relationship healthy adjustment in life modification of behavior self awareness and for social growth it is also a source of happiness above all knowledge is power because of all these attainment of knowledge should be an important aim of education 3 complete living education should acquaint a person with the activities of complete living they are bearing and rearing of children self preservation activities related to social and political duties and activities related to the beneficial utilization of leisure time for total development the education aims at total development of individual which include physical mental emotional social and spiritual developments we harmonious development it means the harmonious cultivation of the physical intellectual aesthetic and moral aspects of human nature the aim of education is to produce a well balanced personality all the powers and abilities of the child should be developed in a harmonious manner mahatma gandhi emphasized this aim of education very 
much when he said by education, we mean an all-round drawing out of the best in child and man, body, mind and spirit. 6. Moral Development Herbert Spencer, an eminent English educationist, gave much importance to this aim of education. He believed that education must enable the child to cultivate moral values and virtues such as truthfulness, goodness, purity, courage, reverence, and honesty. 7. Character Development Some educational lists consider this as the supreme aim of education. It is said that education consists of cultivation of certain human values and development of attitudes and habits which constitute the character of a person. Our great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Swami Vivekananda also emphasized character formation as the primary aim of education. John Dewey also agreed character formation as the overall aim of education. You will also agree that character building is an essential aim of education. 8. Self-realization Some educationists think this aim as the most important aim of education. Education should help a person to become what he has to become according to his her individual potentials. 9. Cultural development Every individual has to become cultured and civilized through education. The basic difference between knowledge and culture aims is that in the former knowledge is sought for its own sake as against the later where it is sought for its conventional value. Cultural development if attained truly gives refinement, aesthetic sense and a concern and respect for others and others' culture, kiss smiley citizenship. The child has to be educated to become a good citizen of his country. Education should enable him to cultivate such qualities that are beneficial to the society. As a member of the society, he should have knowledge about his duties, functions and obligations towards society. In a democratic setup, this aim is very important. As a democratic citizen, the child needs to be trained to develop abilities for clear thinking, receptivity to new ideas, clarity in speech and writing and true patriotism. 11. Individual and social aim Some educationists are of the opinion that full growth and development of the individual is the most important aim of education whereas others consider social development as the primary aim of education. Man is a social being and as such he needs his society. He has a debt to the society which he must repay. He has to work for the good of the society individual needs his society and society needs individuals. Social contacts and relationships are essential for individual development. Education should help to create and foster a sense of obligation and loyalty to the community and its needs. Social progress and welfare should be the aim of each and every citizen. There should be balance between the individual and social aims of education. They should be complementary to each other. No need for any conflict to be there between the two. The true aim of education is the highest development of the individual as a member of the society. Social control and individual initiative should supplement each other. Individual and Society should develop simultaneously. 12. Education for leisure. Leisure is that time which is utilized for enjoyment and recreation. Leisure is also part of human life. It is needed to keep up rest and regain energy. Leisure time should be utilized in such activities that are beneficial to the individual as well as society. Leisure, if wisely used, gives birth to physical and mental balance. Artistic, moral and aesthetic developments can be inspired through the beneficial use of leisure time. Children should be educated to use their leisure time usefully and creatively. So far we have discussed the aims of education in general. Now we shall 
examine the relevance of these aims to education in India after independence. Since independence, India has become a secular and democratic country. When India became free, there was need for reorientation and restructuring of all our existing social, political and educational systems in order to meet the socio-economic, political and educational needs of the country. Some of the important aims of independent India were preparation for democratic citizenship, increased productivity, national integration, personality and leadership development. The total educational system had to be reoriented and restructured to facilitate the achievement of the above. Mentioned goals since independence, various committees and commissions were appointed to lay down the aims and objectives of education in India. Some of those committees and commissions were University Education Commission of 1948. DRS Radhakrishnan was the chairman of this commission, Secondary Education Commission of 1952-53. Dr. Murlidhar was the Chairman, National Education Committee under the Chairmanship of B.R.S. Radhakrishnan, Kothari Education Commission of 1964-66. Chairman was Dr. A.S. Kothari. These committees, considering the existing situations, purposes and goals of democratic setup of the country, suggested aims of education which were and are appropriate to Indian context though more or less similar to. General Aims of Education The aims which have been suggested include democratic citizenship by developing abilities in clear thinking, receptivity to new ideas, clarity in speech and writing etc., development of personality by overall development through art, music, dance, craft, cultural and literary subjects in the curriculum, vocational efficiency and increased productivity by equipping youth with appropriate scientific knowledge and technical abilities in variety of vocational and professional areas. Development of leadership abilities to assume leadership responsibilities in social, political, industrial and cultural fields, social and national integration through some kind of public education system and some form of obligatory national services. Art of living together in harmonious relationship with each other by developing interpersonal skills and adjustment abilities, development of social, moral and spiritual values by including such subjects and by facilitating environment to practice these values, keeping pace with the modern world by preparing intellectually efficient and technically competent person by giving sound basic education and higher education in accordance. With scientific and technological advancement, 1.6.3 National Education Policy and Aims of Education, the National Educational Policy, NEP, 1986 and 2020 was formulated in on the basis of the findings of periodic comprehensive appraisal of the existing educational scenario in our country. The NEP 1986 specified the following aims and objectives of our education, all-round material and spiritual development of all people, cultural orientations and development of interest in Indian culture, scientific temper, national cohesion, independence of mind and spirit, furthering the goals of socialism, secularism and democracy, manpower development for different levels of economy, fostering research in all areas of development, education for equality, as per National Education Policy 2020, the aims of education include following, focus of National Educational Policy 2020, 1. Interdisciplinary Education and Credit Transfer, Multiple Entry and Multiple Exists, 2. Societal and Personal Objectives, 3. India-centric education contributing to transforming the nation. 4. Equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing quality education for all. 5. Develop good human being with rational thinking, compassion, empathy, resilience and scientific temper. 6. 
टीचर एजुकेशन एंड इम्प्रूवमेंट सेवन क्रिएटिव इमेजिनेशन एंड इम्प्रूवमेंट एट वोकेशनल एजुकेशन नाइन फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट टेन इंटरनेशनलाइजेशन ऑफ एजुकेशन एजुकेशन इज अ यूनिक इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द प्रेजेंट एंड फ्यूचर द नेशन एज a whole is striving to attain the above mentioned educational goals of our country each individual has to contribute his her own might for the good of the country 1.6.4 aims of nursing education nursing education is the professional education for the preparation of nurses to enable them to render professional nursing care to people of all ages in all phases of health and illness in a variety of settings well qualified professional nurses are needed to take care of the nursing needs of people in any society nursing care is an important and integral aspect of health care nurses have an important role to play in identifying and meeting solving the health and nursing needs problems of people of all ages in a variety of settings such as hospital family and community as he should teach principles of healthful living to people around and above all else he has to be a model of health the purpose of nursing education is therefore to produce well qualified and competent professional nurses to meet the nursing needs of the country nursing education has its aims in common with the aims of education in general as well as its specific aims The aims of nursing education are determined by such factors as health needs of the people in the society, needs of the student, philosophy of nursing, current trends in general education as well as professional education, current trends in nursing, needs of the time, advances in science and technology and so on. Some of the specific aims of nursing education are the following: I knowledge aim nursing education should impart scientific and up to date knowledge in the area of biological behavioral social medical and nursing sciences nursing education at the same line should aim at inculcating the appropriate nursing skills and the right attitude in the students theoretical and practical knowledge is essential for rendering intelligent and efficient nursing services professional nursing practice is based on scientific and nursing principles any nursing education curriculum should have sufficient theory content and practical experience to leadership aim nursing education should aim at the preparation of nurses as good leaders nurses are responsible for the quantity and quality of nursing care they have to assess and monitor the quality of care they have to participate in decision making and policy making with regard to health matters and allocation of resources of health development they have to plan organize and manage health care programs in the community they have to evaluate the quality and structure of health care services they are to collaborate and coordinate the health care functions of the members of the health team The nurse leaders are also responsible for effective nursing education nursing education should therefore aim at identifying potential nursing leaders and facilitating their development 3 professional development aim nursing education should aim at the professional development of each individual nurse she should be trained to keep up the ethics and standards of her profession each individual nurse should be educated in a manner so as to enable her to develop the appropriate skills and attitude essential for professional practice of her vocation she should also in turn contribute for the growth and development of her profession for personality development aim this is also an important aim of nursing education nursing education should contribute for the all round development of the individual in all aspects it should mold her character and help for the individual is personal as well as professional development 
as he should grow and develop as a person of self-awareness. Self-direction and self-motivation, we, research orientation, ongoing research is essential for the growth of the profession. Nursing education should prepare nurses who have inquisitive mind and approach and who can add to the body of nursing knowledge through participation in scientific investigations. 6. Democratic Citizenship Nursing education should inculcate democratic values such as respect to individuality, equality, toleration, cooperative living and faith in change through persuasion. The nurse also has to be a responsible and contributing citizen of the country aims of nursing education, knowledge development, leadership development, personality development, democratic development, professional growth, research orientation, 1.7 Philosophy of Education So far, you have learnt the meaning, process, forms and aims of education, in general and particular. In this section you will learn about the various philosophies of education and role of philosophy in nursing education. Refer Appendix 1 for more details of philosophies of education. This will give you more clarity 1.7.1 Definition and Meaning Ever since the beginning of the world, efforts have been made to understand man as he is. Sometime or the other it must have come to your mind, questions like who and what am I? Where is my origin? Where am I going? And questions of this sort. The hardest task of man is to know himself. It is through philosophy, a systematic inquiry about man and the realities of life have been made. It is philosophy that has interpreted man and his life. Philosophy is the science of all sciences. The term philosophy has been derived from two Greek words, philos and sophia. Philos means love and sophia means wisdom. So the word philosophy means love of wisdom. In this sense, philosophy is search for wisdom and truth. Various definitions of philosophy have been made by different philosophers and educationalists. Some of these are stated below. Fitch says philosophy is the science of knowledge. Coleridge sees philosophy as the science of sciences. Cicero has called it as the mother of all arts. In the words of Henderson mentions philosophy as a search for a comprehensive view of nature, an attempt at a universal explanation of nature of things. According to Raymond, philosophy is an unceasing effort to discern the general truth that lies behind the particular facts. To discern also the reality that lies behind appearances in the light of the above definitions, we can say that philosophy is a living force, a way of life, an attitude towards life, and a search for truth and reality. The generally accepted meaning of philosophy is that it is a point of view, a belief construct, a speculation about the nature and value of things, it is a particular way of looking at things, it is a search for deeper and finer values of life. Let us now understand some of the important philosophies of education as presented in the following section. 1.7.2 Important Philosophies of Education There are many philosophies of education, some of the important Philosophies of education are idealism, naturalism, pragmatism, existentialism, experimentation and theistic realism. We shall discuss, in detail, idealism, naturalism and pragmatism. Other details are given in Appendix 1 at the end of Unit 1, Idealism. The word idealism has been derived from ideal or ideas. Idealism is a very old philosophical thought originated by the Greek philosopher Plato. He conceived the ideas as the basis of his philosophy. Idealism is a philosophical position according to which nothing exists except an idea in the mind of man. Idealism idolizes mind and self. Idealism explains man and the universe in terms of spirit or mind. It is in fact 
Spiritualism Man's spiritual nature is considered to be the very essence of his being. Idealists thus emphasize higher values of life and prescribe the study of religion, ethics, logic, literature, art and humanities. The chief exponents of this philosophy are Plato, Kant, Hegel, Berkeley, Guru Nanak, Tagore and Mahatma Gandhi. Two chief assertions of idealism. A. Idealism believes in the universal mind. Besides the material or physical universe, there is a spiritual universe which is permeated by the universa one mind or God. He is the creator and everything else is created by Him. The universal mind is the source of all human values. The goal of all human activities is the realization of this universal mind in his own self be idealism regards man as a spiritual being superior to animals reality is found in the mind of man and in the external world see the world of ideas or values are important than the world of matter values are absolute idealism believes in spiritual or eternal values the primary aim of human life is to achieve spiritual values. The outstanding spiritual values are truth, beauty and goodness. These values are absolute, undying and permanent. In pursuit of these values, man rises higher and higher in the moral plane till he becomes one with the universal mind. D. Real knowledge is perceived in mind. God is the source of all. Knowledge. According to idealists, knowledge gained through mind is more important than knowledge gained through the senses. To naturalism, contrary to idealism, naturalism is a philosophy with the belief that nature alone represents the entire reality. There is nothing behind, beyond, or other than nature. Naturalism is a doctrine that separates nature from God, subordinates spirit to matter, and sets up unchangeable laws as supreme. According to naturalists, human life is a part of nature. It is a self-sufficient entity having its own natural matter, natural force and natural laws. Its emphasis is on matter and the physical world. It does not believe in spirituality and supernaturalism. The chief exponents of naturalism are Bacon, Comenius, Herbert, Spencer, Huxley, Bernard Shaw and Rousseau to naturalism and education. Naturalism was a revolt against traditional system of education which gave very little freedom to the child. Naturalism gives maximum freedom and central position to the child. Its watchwords are follow nature, back to nature, maximum happiness and utmost freedom to children. Naturalism believes that education should be according to the nature of the child. Textbooks, curriculum and even teachers are not so important as the child. It advocates creation of conditions in which the development of the child can take place in a natural way. 3. Pragmatism The word pragmatism is derived from the Greek word pragmatism. This means practice or action. Pragmatism is a typical American philosophy. For pragmatists, the key word is utility. For them, whatever useful is good and whatever good is useful. A pragmatist lives in a world of facts, not in a world of ideas or ideals. William James is the founder and father of this philosophy. John Dewey, W. H. Kilpatrick, Margaret H. Mead is some of the exponents of this philosophy to pragmatism and education. Pragmatism stands for progressive trends in education. It has influenced modern education to a great extent. According to pragmatism, activity lies at the center of all educative process. Also, education is a continuous process which is progressive and flexible, it stands for freedom and worth of thy individual. It works on the principle of democracy and education is a social necessity. Education should help to solve human problems of everyday life. 
meet human needs and enable the pupil to lead a better and happy life. Pragmatists believe that philosophy is the product of educational practice. Pragmatism has its effects on the various aspects of education. 1.7.3 Eclectic Philosophy So far, we have discussed three important philosophies of education, though there are many more philosophies of education. Remember each of the philosophies have its contributions and limitations. No one philosophy is complete in itself. Also, no one philosophy can be applied successfully in all situations because the world and its values are continuously changing. The educational system also changes from time to time. Education has to be flexible and dynamic. It is not safe and advisable to stick to one kind of philosophy only. The best way is to familiarize with different philosophies, draw the best and essential points from all of them and make into one harmonious whole and build one's own philosophy of education. This resulting philosophy is eclectic philosophy definition. Eclectic philosophy in education is the synthesis or harmonious blend of the diverse philosophies of education. It is the process of pulling out and putting together of the useful and essential aspects of various philosophies of education. All the philosophies are philosophies of life. The difference is in the way each one views life. Some give importance to spiritual and mental aspects of life while others give emphasis to the physical and social aspects. There should be a happy and harmonious blending of the various aspects because man is a complex being with physical, mental, psychological, spiritual and social aspects of life. A holistic philosophy of education which would help for the total development of the individual is useful. Let us now try to understand the relationship between philosophy and education. 1.7.4 Relationship between philosophy and education The relationship between philosophy and education is very close. Philosophy sets the goals and education tells the means to achieve them. Philosophy is the theory while education is the practice. Philosophy is the contemplative side and education is the active side. Education is applied philosophy. Philosophy deals with the abstract while education deals with the concrete. Education and philosophy are the two sides of a coin. All great philosophers were also great educators. Examples, Thales in Greece, Confucius in China, Shri Buddha, Swami, Vivekananda and Mahatma Gandhi in India. They reflect their philosophical views in their educational schemes. The truths and principles established by philosophy are applied in education. Fitch said the arch of education will never attain complete clearness without philosophy. All educational programs are based on certain philosophy. All the aspects of education, such as aims, objectives, curriculum, methods of teaching, teacher, text, books and discipline are influenced by philosophy. There is a direct bearing between philosophy and aims of education, curriculum, methods of teaching and teachers, text, books and discipline. Let us examine each of these below, philosophy and aims of education. The aims of education are determined by the prevailing philosophy of education. Different philosophies of education prescribe different aims of education. For example, idealism believes in self-enhancement whereas naturalism prefers self-preservation as the aim of education. Aims of education can be different at different periods in different places according to the existing philosophy. Countries believing in democracy produce democrats. In short, philosophy is the determining force in laying down the aims of education, philosophy and curriculum. Curriculum is the sum total of all the activities and the experiences provided by the school to its pupils to achieve the aims of education. 
Nowhere is the dependence of education on philosophy more marked than in the question of curriculum. It is philosophy that determines the content of the curriculum. The content of the curriculum varies according to the philosophy it follows. Idealists emphasize higher values of life and prescribe the study of religion, ethics, logic, literature, arts and humanities. Pragmatists advocate the study of functional subjects and social sciences. Pragmatists include such subjects as language, social studies, general, science, practical arithmetic, arts and crafts in their curriculum. These subjects have utility value. The naturalists are mainly concerned with physical sciences and direct experiences. The naturalistic school or philosophy wishes that the present experiences, interests and activities of the child should determine his subjects of instruction. The subjects are selected according to the aptitude and ability of the child. So we see how philosophy determines the contents of the curriculum, philosophy and methods of teaching, there is a close relationship between philosophy and methods or teaching. Philosophy is a way of thinking and a way of working. Method of teaching is the process of establishing and maintaining contact between the pupil and the subject matter. Every system of education has its own methods of teaching based on its philosophical hat ground. Idealism advocates question-answer, lecture and discussion methods. Naturalists emphasize child-centered methods of education. They recommend learning by doing and direct experience. Pragmatists are for project methods, problem-solving methods and socialized techniques, philosophy and teacher. The teacher is the backbone of the educative process. A teacher needs the study of philosophy as a person and as a teacher. Philosophy has great influence on the teacher, both in the area of thinking as well as teaching. A teacher is also a philosopher having his or her own ideas and beliefs. A teacher influences the personality of the child and instills in him a new outlook and a new life. An idealistic teacher is a person of high ideals, ethics and morals. He has to be a model for the pupils. Naturalism sees the teacher as the stage setter and she he works behind the screen. According to pragmatism, teacher is a friend and guide of the pupil, facilitating the process of growth of the individual philosophy and textbooks. A TCXT book sets up the norms of knowledge which the children are expected to know. Textbooks have to conform to the accepted ideals of the society and the prevailing philosophy of education and the nation, philosophy and discipline. Philosophy determines the nature and forms of discipline. Discipline is nothing but the conduct of the pupil. Social, political, economic and philosophical thinking of a country always determines the nature of discipline. Internal discipline concerned with the inner code of conducts of the individuals sustains a nation. Idealists favor strict discipline of mind and body. Naturalists believe in a discipline of natural consequences. Pragmatists stress social discipline, self-discipline and free discipline. Modern concept of discipline is in tune with the principles of democracy and social philosophy where political integrity and environmental stability is vital. In conclusion, we can say that philosophy and education are inseparably linked. Philosophy has its influence on all the aspects of education such as aims, curriculum and methods of teaching, teacher and discipline, philosophy and education exist together. Philosophy leads and education follows the path shown by philosophy. We shall now deal with philosophy and nursing education in the following subsection 1.7.5 Philosophy and Nursing Education You have already read that there is a close relationship between philosophy and education. All the important aspects of education such as aims, objectives, curriculum, methods of teaching etc. 
is determined by the philosophy of education. It is the same for nursing education to philosophy of nursing education. A philosophy of nursing education includes beliefs and values with regard to the man in general and specifically man as the learner, the teacher, the nurse and the consumer. It also includes beliefs about health, illness, society, nursing, learning etc. Traditionally nursing and nursing education had adopted a Christian philosophy which was based on supernaturalism. A Christian philosophy has a belief in a personal God who is the creator, redeemer and provider of man and universe. Love of God and love of neighbor are the maxims of Christian philosophy. According to Christian nurse who would believe in God and who would take care of the sick fellow beings after the example of Christ. During the course of time, changes have taken place in the field of education, health care, sociocultural aspects, science and technology. There was a need for change in the existing value systems and beliefs. Changes had taken place in the field of one nursing practice and nursing education also, it was not advisable to adhere to only one type of philosophy. So it became inevitable for nursing too. To follow the path of eclecticism, i.e., to draw the best and useful aspects from various educational philosophies and make one's own philosophy. In her book Curriculum Building in Nursing, Olivia M. Bevis discussed some modern philosophical points with regard to nursing and nursing education. These philosophical points are 1. The individual has intrinsic value and there is worth inherent in human life. Each human life has inherent worth and nursing is a service to individuals, to people, without any distinction between caste or creed, sex or color, age or religion and rich or poor. It is concerned with human welfare. It acknowledges the uniqueness of each individual. It considers health as a human right. The aim of nursing education is to produce a professional nurse with such a philosophical outlook to nursing is a rational activity. Nursing functions require the exercise of critical thinking, logic and judgment. Nursing is a problem-solving and decision-making process. The nurse is a legally and morally accountable person. A nursing education curriculum should include such learning experiences that would equip the learner with skills in problem-solving, decision-making and critical thinking. 3. Nursing's uniqueness is in the way the basic, social and biological sciences are synthesized in functions that promote health. Nursing actions are based on scientific principles which are drawing from the bio-psychosocial sciences. Any nursing education curriculum should include subjects like physics, chemistry, biology, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, psychology, sociology and other relevant subjects. 4. The individual nurse citizen has some control over and responsibility for the political and social milieu in which as he lives. The nurse is also a member of the society and five a true citizen of the country. As such, he she has to have some active voice in the social, political and legal aspects of the community, especially with regard to health care matters. The nurse is a change agent as well as a consumer's advocate and protector. She has to take active part in effecting social changes and she has to speak for the people. One of the important aims of nursing education is democratic citizenship. 5. Nursing is a process with a central subjective purpose, an inherent organization or system and dynamic creativity. It is an agreed upon belief that nursing is a process to attain an end. A process is a series of actions or operations to attain an end. Processes have three characteristics. They are inherent purpose, internal organization, 
and infinite creativity, the inherent purpose of nursing is the optimum level of wellness of health for the individual. In the case of nursing process, internal organization means the series of actions to attain the aim of optimum health of the individual. Community infinite creativity in nursing process means the dynamics of evolving, uniquely more effective and efficient nursing activities for the achievement of the goal of optimum health. 6. Nursing functions are independent, interdependent and collaborative. Nursing is a crucial component of multidisciplinary health care system. The nursing education curriculum should reflect the independent dependent and collaborative positions of the nurse involving these respective functions. 7. Nursing is a profession and nursing practice must reflect professionalism. This is a much debated issue. One of the aims of nursing education is professional development of the pupil nurse. In order to accomplish this aim curriculum should include courses like ethics and standards of profession, professional adjustments and research. 8. Nursing roles in the order of priority are educative, promotive, preventive, rehabilitative, therapeutic and supportive. The priority of roles as specified in philosophy dictates the order of priority in curriculum content. 9. The democratic mode of operation and the implications of that democratic mode are a keystone of nursing roles, organization, and structure democratic processes like authority by mutual consent, individual accountability for group activities and the ability of each group member to contribute to his her potential are essential to the optimal functioning of the nursing group. A democratic organizational setup has to be preferred in the present day situation when democratic development leadership is considered as the best. In conclusion, philosophy of nursing education should contain guidelines for nursing practice as well as nursing education. It is developed by the faculty of each individual school of nursing together with the nurse leaders and nurse administrators. It should be clearly stated and directly related to the aims, objectives curriculum and other aspects of nursing education. 1.8 Let us sum UP in this unit the meaning, process, agencies, aims and philosophy of education is discussed. You have read the aims of education in general as well as the aims of nursing education. Education is an ongoing process. Every country or profession develops its own system of education to express and promote its unique sociocultural or professional identity and also to meet the challenges of time. The meaning of philosophy and its role in education is also elaborated. Some of the important philosophies of education are idealism, naturalism, supernaturalism and pragmatism. No one philosophy is complete in itself. Each has its own merits and demerits. Hence, it is always good to follow the path of eclecticism by which the good aspects of every philosophy is accepted and synthesized into one's own philosophy of education. We have also discussed the close relationship between philosophy and education. Philosophy determines the aims, curriculum and methods of teaching, role of the teacher and other important aspects of education. In fact, education is the means for the propagation of philosophical ideas. The important aspects of nursing education are also determined by a sound philosophy of nursing, education and nursing practice. Thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video with next chapter.